Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. My pleasure to uh, introduce a new book uh, to you. I haven't reviewed it before, but I'm aware of it. Um, it's a very important book, and it's called Salinger on Factoring. It's now in a fifth edition, <coughs> excuse me, and it's been edited by three people, Simon Mills, Noel Ruddy, and Nigel Davidson. Uh, this book comes to us from Sweet and Maxwell and uh, Thomson Reuters. And we've given it a title for our um, book review of the following. A Comprehensive Guide to a Complex Subject. Factoring brilliantly explained by Freddie Salinger's successors for the fifth edition. Freddie has passed on and uh, as a result of that we've got new people in as the team. Um, but I'll, I'll go and explain a little bit more detail about that in a moment. This is an important book. It's not a big book at all, but it's a, factoring is a very important area. There's a book. It's, it's a hardback. Sweet and Maxwell hardback. There's the spine. And then on the back, <coughs> there's some basic information which explains what the book is. And it lists the various covers. And I will explain a little bit about factoring when we um, get into the review itself. The actual index at the back, you can see there, is nicely set out and it's paragraph numbered rather than page numbered. And there's a lot, there's actually a lot of detail in the index. And then there are seven appendices. You can see diagrams, all sorts of interesting things explaining how the system works and what a factor does. This is the front page there, the fifth edition now. And you can see the list of the other earlier editions there. Then there's the table of contents. And uh, you can see the various contents, the chapter headings, as we run through. And then you get a quite detailed, actually. Uh, there are 14 chapters in total. And then there are a series of appendices, as I say, seven at the back. And then after that, you've got the table of cases. And then after the table of cases, you've got some statutes. <clears throat> in fact, what you've got is a CPR, civil procedurals first. Then you've got statutory instruments and then some statutes there, so it's just slightly the other way around. Then there's an appreciation of, of uh, Salinger, written by um, Roy Good, um, which is very nice. It's a very sweet and decent tribute. Uh, I was so uh, touched to read it. Then there's the forward by Professor Good, which I shall refer to in a minute. Uh, and then there's the preface to the uh, fifth edition, which is the new edition, setting out um, what, what the purpose of the book was when it was um, first published in 1991. And then we get into the chapters, and there's the first chapter. You see the, the actual paragraph number is the other side, it's there. Then you do have, of course, footnoting all the way through. It describes the nature of factoring of, of trade debts, and, and it goes into some detail as to how it works. Then you can see the detail. Now, this is a, this is a complex book in some respects. It's not the e easiest book in the world to uh, read in that sense, but there again, factoring itself as a concept is not something which would um, <coughs> be the, the easiest thing to, to pick up and just read. But what you've got here is a huge amount of information, which is <coughs> exactly what you need if you ever have a matter involving factoring. So what do we say about the book? Well, the original author of this excellent statement on factoring and it has changed its title over the years it was law and practice at one stage it's now called Salinger on factoring but it has had a number of of title changes but it is about factoring um, and as I say the the author Freddie Salinger he sadly died in 2016 I'm recording this in um, the spring late spring of 2017 um, and a new fifth edition was being prepared for publication when he passed away. So in the foreword to the new edition, Professor Roy Good, who will be known to many of you, describes Salinger as the doyen of the factoring industry. And he certainly was. Um, he wasn't a lawyer, of course, uh, Salinger, but he possessed the what is described as the combination of long practical experience and deep understanding of the legal issues to give us a poignant reminder of the benefit of the range of his knowledge uh, of what is actually a complex field um, with the added uh, introduction of what is now uh, online trading for this new edition because things are of course moving on at a, quite a quick pace today. Now Salinger on factoring has now become renowned in our view for its highly practical approach to the law and practice relating to factoring and invoice finance and that's what this is about. 
We think it remains a skillful blend of legal analysis and, and a description of the current practice governing domestic and international factoring. And we all, what we do feel about this is that this edition is of special use to practitioners because the fifth edition in 2017 is that blended combination of a clear understanding of the law mixed with clear and concise guidance on its implementation to maintain the edition's preeminence as the standard work on factoring, which is what it's going to be. Well, it's become that, and that's exactly what you're getting. Um, the current editors, who I've mentioned, that's Simon Mills, Noel Ruddy and Nigel Davidson, present us with a detailed examination of and guide to the legal issues that can arise from domestic and international factoring. And it's right to describe the title as your most trusted guide to this complex area of law, because that's what it is. There are 14 chapters and seven appendices which discuss the various forms, uses and methods by which factoring can help businesses. This is a mechanism, after all. The writers investigate the origins and nature of modern factoring and the use and misuse of factoring, plus, of course, the limitations on its current use and its benefits for the 21st century. And the book reviews the relationships between the factor and debtors, including normal collection procedures and legal remedies where uh, collection procedures may fail, with special emphasis, emphasis being placed on the practical solutions which are available. And I think of additional use is the detailed examination of international factoring, which of course is important with the global, um, the global society we are now in, and of course the changes in terms of trade internationally. And of course the discussion of the special considerations relevant for international factors, I think will be of great benefit in the future. Bearing in mind we have a general election in June and we have all sorts of interesting things to look forward to as Britain withdraws from the EU. Now chapter 7 considers the legal structure of factoring, then examines provisions of factoring agreements and the types of agreement commonly used. And I'll go straight to that because I think that's a very pivotal chapter. Usefully it considers conflicts with third parties and describes set-offs and the countervailing rights of the debtor which may be new concepts to some readers. And for legal advisors, the consideration of the rights and obligations of the factor on the occurrence of the insolvency of the client is most important and helpful, we think. We also thought the explanation of the use of credit insurance and its potential effect on the uh, terms of the factoring agreement and the policy of insurance are uh, highly topical at this present time. And as is to be expected with all of the Sweet and Maxwell Thomson Reuters uh, publications, we found the house style of um, footnoting and paragraph numbering greatly assists when navigating our way through the book. And the glossary of terms and the collection of sample documents is a great assistance as well to all who advise or are involved in factoring. Of course, the world has changed a great deal since uh, Freddie uh, Salinger produced the first edition in 1991, after it was 2017 now. And as the authors say, the UK receivables industry continues to develop rapidly with many new factoring companies providing an ever-expanding range of financial products based on the sale and purchase of debts. And of course, that's what we're talking about here. And therefore, for those reasons, Salinger is the most comprehensive guide currently available in our view. So thank you very much to Freddie Salinger and for the brilliance of the explanation he's given us. I always found it interesting when I was doing this review to remind myself he wasn't a lawyer. <laughs> that may be one of the reasons why it's quite well explained. But I won't say any more than that. For practitioners, it might be disloyal. But I would like to thank him very much indeed and all the people involved. This is an important book and could well be of quite significant importance, of course, in the future. So we don't know where we're going um, in 2017 and 18, frankly, with, with all these changes. The publication date is cited at 2017. Let's have a quick look, final look at the book. There it is. There's the front side and then the back. There we go. If I open it in the middle, uh, liability of the factor to the debtor. Checks and direct debits. Here we go. I'd love to see the end of the check. That's a controversial statement, but we still don't see it. Still seems to be around. You see the paragraph numbering there, and you see the footnoting. 
checks are still being mentioned. Liability of the factor to the debtor. Mistaken payments and unjust enrichments. Here we go. The usual suspects are all there. But as I say, it's, it's a well-written book, of course. And it actually does explain things, I think. Bearing in mind, this is not the easiest subject in the world to follow. I think it explains it very well indeed. Thank you very much to all people concerned. I'm very grateful to Sweet and Maxwell for continuing with the publication of this title and to everybody involved in it. It makes our lives easier. Thank you. Bye-bye.